A couple weeks back, we got a comment, a request from Sai looking for us to do a video on server-side implementation of Adobe Target. I replied, you know, um, you know what exactly? Because it is a very, very broad topic, and it looks like uh, detail about implementation of server-side delivery API. So, I put this together. Sai, please let me know if there's if there's any questions, and if uh, other folks out there would like me to do a quick video on anything Adobe Target or Beam Prober related, certainly let me know. Very happy to easily do it. So what is server-side Adobe Target in, in the implementation? So uh, Adobe Target, uh, traditionally, uh, for the most part, if, at least for, in terms of like the customer user base, client-side, where you install Adobe Target through a tag management platform, and then server calls are made out. And there could be a global inbox, there could be client-side inboxes, or I should say Adobe Target server calls. Uh, they're commonly referred to as inbox recall, uh, inbox recalls. But here you can see these inbox calls or Adobe Target server uh, calls taking place client side. What happens is a call goes out to Adobe servers and it responds with any activities that are in place. It also passes data to Adobe Target as well client side. Here you can see in the Mia Proba Chrome extension examples of a lot of client-side activities and passing data to the Adobe Target server call, including our first party ID that we use. And you can also see the Adobe Marketing Cloud Visitor ID, commonly re referred to as the ECID. This is what enables A for T. So this is the client-side world where you have one, the Visitor API service on top, that's with the Marketing Cloud ID. Number two is the Adobe Target call. And then number three, Adobe Analytics call would traditionally happen after that. But thanks to this ID, we don't have to really worry about that sequence. The main thing is that the visitor ID service fires before Adobe Target and Adobe Analytics. So um, as far as like the, the options that are available, so you've got the Adobe Target Delivery API, which is just standard HTTP requests or HTTPS calls. Um, that from any device, it could be from um, anything that's connected to the internet that supports these protocols. Uh, but Adobe actually has several SDKs, uh, Node.js. So if, if your application is using Node.js, they could just simply uh, install this SDK and, and they're off to the races. They can make all the configurations um, that they need to do that. And then there's the Java SDK. Both work wonderfully. I've got a lot of Mia Proba customers that are using it, uh, as well as using the delivery uh, delivery API, which is just a standard HTTP request. Uh, one thing for uh, to consider, there, there are some limitations in terms of um, processing cookies or redirect calls, but there's ways around this. You can kind of have the application read cookies and then pass that information along. Um, but the big thing I wanted to highlight here is the integration with the Experience Cloud. Many of the companies um, I've heard from me, Approva customers, is they, they've, they've installed the server-side uh, delivery APIs. Everything's working great in terms of changing the visitor's experience, but A for T broke because they didn't you know, put the visitor ID service uh, before the Adobe target call. And this only happens uh, where the Adobe target delivery API on, on first load. If that cookie isn't there for the experience cloud ID, that's when there's a disconnect between Adobe target and Adobe analytics. But it's a pretty easy fix and actually makes perfect sense to put the visitor ID service service side as well that will resolve that automatically. I'm gonna include uh, a couple of links in this video, you know, link to this documentation, which outlines, you know, getting started. There's also this documentation that I love. I love the developers at wtarget.com uh, because there are lots of legacy stuff in there and also the kind of like the updates that have been made. Um, and so here, here you can see examples of making uh, the post requests and how that comes together. But I went ahead and I created uh, an activity in Adobe Target, just so like the business side can understand what's going on. And so I'll bring up uh, do, 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 visual code uh, right here. So here I've got an example post. So this is like a server side call. And so what happens is if, if this was running on Mia Prova's website, for example, this code, I should go back. So this, this code would actually fire before anything is returned 
to the browser. Here you can see an Adobe Target Server call, MBOX, and I'm passing parameter value pairs. You can pass this along uh, any type of data that you might have server side, which is wonderful. Um, your client code, that's what makes up this part here. You can get that in the admin section of Adobe Target, but you're gonna wanna pass in the session ID. That's something that your application would typically manage, standard 30, you know, 30, sec uh, 30 minutes of inactivity. Um, and then an ID. This is the Adobe Target ID that can be retrieved, or this is you would also pass along here the Experience Cloud or Marketing Cloud ID, uh, as well as your first party ID as well. And so it's pretty straightforward. It makes a call. You can see here I made a call pretty fast. Uh, do, 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 do. Most of the time was look on DNS lookup. So, and this is uh, Microsoft uh, Visual Code. And here's the response. Um, I got the Adobe Target response here. The telemetry service, the inbox name. Here's the code, my offer that got returned back to the page. These are response tokens, which very, very fun things. We, we make heavy use of them at Mia Prova, but it's profile attribute data that's mapped to this visitor ID. And so what's happening here, I'll jump back to Adobe Target. You have to use form-based Adobe Target because you're actually using uh, an inbox or a server call name. Uh, that's not the global mbox. You can't use target global mbox as the name of the server call. It won't work because that's reserved for the client side global deployment of Adobe Target. Uh, as far as what the response is, you can do anything typically with server side testing. It's uh, JSON uh, where you can pass back and then your application when it sees experience or whatever data you're passing back, your application would then do something with it. You can see here, I was uh, given experience C, but let me just update this to see if I get a different value. I'll close this response. I'll even update the session ID so it's a little bit different. I'll send the response. Do, do, do. And there I got experience A because I was a, a different visitor ID. Uh, but I can make this request all day and I'll always get experience A because it's Adobe Target, so if, you know, a, a visitor-based uh, testing platform. Uh, but yeah, that, that's how it all works, comes together. Um, the uh, A for T uh, should work fine. There's also a really cool thing to consider. I'll actually, two things I wanna add on here. Um, as far as Mia Prova customers, Mia Prova lives in an API world. So any and all server-side testing that's done in Adobe Target is, is managed within Mia Prova, is available for program assignment, alerts, monitoring, real-time reporting. All of that good stuff is, is available from a Mia Prova standpoint. The other thing that's pretty cool that I don't, um, don't see talked about enough is the coordination with Adobe Target client side and server side. So let's say I were to put on my blog Adobe Target server side, okay? And then I would go in Adobe Target with the visual editor here and modify some content. Just modify something that is on both the client side space and server side space. So let's say I modify the about me approva section here, okay? If I go to the blog, that's the uh, server side area. The Adobe target server side delivery APIs will automatically look to see what other tests that you're in and actually apply these changes server side so that you would see the changes here client side. So something Really, really cool. Thought it would be helpful to highlight here. But uh, thank you again, Sai. If there's any other questions, hopefully this answered it. Um, but if not, let me know. Take care.